DDCNC have travelled to Sheffield on behalf of Leader CNC. We've got a bit of a unique machine review today, the Grupo Parpus Roller XL. And I'm here with Graham at CW Fletcher. Now, firstly, Graham, thank you very much for inviting us to this absolutely phenomenal facility. Um, can you give us a little bit of an insight into your company, please? Well, CW Fletcher have been around for well over 100 years now, and uh, we're now in the, the aerospace manufacturing with subcontractors for aerospace as well as some nuclear. So we're looking at this particular machine today, what components are you manufacturing on this machine? They're basically aerospace, aerospace rings for a, a major OEM. Now when you were looking to purchase a particular machine to manufacture the engine rings, you know, what were your considerations and why did you choose this particular model? Well, obviously, the, the primary concern was, first of all, accuracy, but also the uniqueness of the layout of the machine. The kinematics uh, uh, of the machine are in such a way that uh, it allows you access to various parts of the component that a lot of other machines wouldn't actually allow us to get to. So what kind of capabilities have you got on this particular machine? It's, it's actually a fifth-axis machine tool, isn't it, Graham? So can you explain the capabilities of the machine tool, please? Okay, basically we've got um, we've got the normal the, the X Y Z travels. We have about a two meter in X, about eighteen hundred in Y, and a, a meter in Z, with a, a, a C axis rotary table that rotates about the Z axis. We've also got uh, a tilting head that uh, primarily tilts in the A axis, but it has a special function that allows that head to rotate through ninety degrees. And if you if you get parts that are where you're, you're reaching the limits of the trowels of the machine, we can rotate the head and take advantage of that two meters in X. So this allows us to get to parts of the component that we would not normally be able to get to. So what is the swing diameter of the C-axis on this particular model? On this particular machine, we're looking at 1300 millimeters. Now that is a huge swing diameter. You can get some very large engine rings onto this particular machine in such a small footprint. Yes. Normally, for this size of footprint, you'd normally be looking at much larger gantry type machines. But to uh, find a machine of this uh, quite small size to have that, that the capacity and range was, uh, we, we were surprised that we actually managed to find this type of machine. We looked at various competitors and there were other contenders, but when it came down to it, nobody could offer the solution without adding extra long tools or right angled heads to be able to, to be able to realise the tool vectors and get to the, the parts that we need to machine. So would you go as far as saying that this machine is pretty much made to measure for the kind of engine ring components that you're manufacturing here? It's ideally suited to the, some of the parts that we make. It's not saying that some parts we can machine on other types of machine but certainly there are some parts that we now put through this machine where it would be really difficult to, to achieve that on, on other layouts or kinematic layouts of, of machine. For aerospace critical components that you manufacture here, how important is accuracy and repeatability to you? Well, accuracy is probably the, the prime goal, is that we, we're constantly ch chasing those few microns. Uh, part of the process is we extensively use probes for, for measuring the part and Throughout the, throughout the process we'll come and recheck the datums and sometimes do an adjust because well, obviously we're not in a, a temperature controlled environment where this machine is so we have to cater for the fluctuations in temperature that's not just for the machine but also the parts of the machine and the fixtures so yeah it's a constant battle trying to squeeze that extra few microns of accuracy into the, into the part But this machine is, is coping with the accuracy that you demand? I would say so, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a bridge style machine with the C-axis and the tilting head, and you've got lots of capability with this machine, and you can actually rotate the head to get different perspective on the component. Is that correct, Graham? That's correct, and what's really clever in the way this machine's been set up, it's primarily an A-axis tilting head. That is, it tilts about the X-axis, which is the longest axis. Now, unfortunately, the the axis that it the plane that it tilts in uh, is the what is the shortest of the x and y. Now, and the clever bit is when you rotate that head through an M code, 
the way the machine's been set up and the kinematic model inside the machine, if you were to write up some code or a program for an A-axis machine, you rotate the head and internally it will do all the rotations and basically you can use it as a, B a virtual B-axis machine without changing any code at all. So Graham, is it safe to say that this machine is pretty unique? Absolutely, absolutely. Now I've noticed that you're using Hydenine. How does that benefit you here at, at CW Fletcher? In the majority of all our milling pieces of kit, we have Hydenine controls. And once you're familiar with the, uh, the Hydenine environment, it's very easy for an operator to move from one machine to another and you've got the familiarisation of how, to, how the datum tables work, how the tool offsets work. So it's certainly an advantage having, we try and stick with the same controls for, for all our milling applications. So just to summarise, Graham, what would you say are the key benefits to this product? The key benefits of this machine is really the, the layout of the machine. It's the accessibility of the features that you can, can realise with, with that head that uh, tilts in both directions and goes through the 90 degrees so we can use it in the X or Y axis and it's just so much so flexible that it's difficult to see sometimes what parts you actually can't machine on this type of kit.